I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Chawton in North Hampshire. It's about two miles to the south of Alton just inside the South Downs National Park and we're going to be doing a roughly four mile circular route starting in Chawton and then heading south to a, another pretty little village called Farringdon and then back along through some stunning countryside or along an old disused railway. We'll be looking at a couple of churches as well. We'll also be exploring something that's got to do with Cadbury's milk tray but more of that later. Now I'm filming right at the end of August. It's a warm day but it's very very cloudy. The sun does uh, look as though it's trying to come out from time to time but it's been quite a, a dull month August so we're keeping our fingers crossed that the pictures aren't going to be too dark for you. We're ready, let's go. Well I've parked my car at a free car park in the village and my first destination is this house that's just behind me and it's the home of what was probably one of Chawton's most famous residents, that of Jane Austen. Now this was Jane's home for the last eight years of her life and the house is a 17th century building uh, informally known as Chawton Cottage. It's grade two listed since 1968. It was actually a pub called the New Inn between uh, 1781 and 1787. Anyway, uh, Jane Austen lived here with her mother uh, and sister Cassandra and longtime family friend Martha Lloyd from 1809 to 1817. She actually died in Winchester in 1817 at the age of just 41. Her mother and sister continued to live here until their deaths in 1827 and, and 1845 respectively. And Jane wrote Mansfield Park, Emma and Persuasion here. There's a long history of the house after Jane was here but uh, it became a museum in 1947 which is now run by a charity and it gets 40,000 visitors a year. Well let's have a a little wander through the village. Now next to uh, Jane Austen's house is this lovely thatched property Clinkers and it was the village blacksmith and wheelwright for over 400 years and it was said that the family who lived there were protected from evil by a mummified cat in their roof. And then next to it this is the uh, the old forge I believe. A oh, lovely thatched property here with the flower baskets underneath the windows and look at the thatched horse on the top and then just over to the left uh, just underneath the chimney is that the uh, the face of an owl? I think it is. <laughs> Goodness me I, <laughs> for a minute I thought that was real up there Logan spotted it before I did. Ah, it's fantastic. A little bit different. Now just on the western side of the village in Winchester Road is one of the oldest houses in Hampshire. It's called Bagans, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it dates to the 1500s. And it was once a, a farm. And it's named after the, the Bagan family who lived there for over 100 years in the 18th and 19th centuries. And I was reading that apparently an Elizabethan mural was found uh, behind plaster walls some years ago. But, uh, I love the door. Uh, magnificent looking house, Chawton Lodge. So I'm just going to slowly make our way through the village. My goodness, what have we got down here, Logan? <laughs> Looks like a little fairy house. Lovely. Well just before we leave the village while well, there's some tree cutting going on in the background that's the pub over there the Grey Friars a 16th century coaching inn and next to it you've got uh, Cassandra's Cup 
tea rooms and bistro. So uh, one of those two will be our final destination for light refreshment. <laughs> well, I'm just going to make our way down a, an, an old road that used to be the old A32 before the present uh, A32 bypass was constructed. And just over there, a row of thatched uh, cottages known as pond cottages and indeed looking at a very old map there was indeed a pond here in the in the past well I've just done a small detour off the road to have a look at this uh, pretty little cricket pitch that's uh, beside me here with its delightful thatched pavilion I believe cricket's been played in the village and since at least 1883 and just by the pitch, just on my left here, is a stream called uh, Lavant Stream. Although, as you can see at the moment, it's completely bone dry. I think we're quite close to its source, actually. But when it is in flow, it uh, joins up with the River Way. And this lovely little bridge at the end, which we're going to cross over to get back onto the road. Well, I think that's the old vicarage there in the sunshine opposite the uh, the church. Another little detour. This is uh, St Nicholas's Church and a church has stood on the site here since at least 1270. But it had a disastrous fire in 1871 which destroyed all but the chancel and it was rebuilt in 1872. It's got a nave of four baths, uh, a north aisle, a chancel with a north vestry and a tower south of the west bay of uh, the nave. The walls are of flint with bath stone dressing and it's got a slender tower with uh, these wonderful corner pinnacles and there's an old 15th century bell in there that was rescued from the old church. And just to the side of the church are uh, a couple of graves. This is the, the graves of Jane Austen's mother and her sister. So there we go on the left. Looks like they were both called Cassandra. And the mum died in 1827 and then her sister in 1845. And very close to the, the porch is a statue of uh, Jane Austen herself. I think it's fairly recent and unveiled in the last uh, two or three years or so. Well, right next to the church is Chawton House. Uh, first record of a house here in 1224. But the present house was uh, built by John Knight in 1580 based on a, a manor house owned by the Knight family since 1551 and it's been extended over the years but it was the home of Jane Austen's brother Edward and he inherited it from a distant relative and it was a condition of his getting the house that he had to change his name to Knight to continue that particular family name so uh, he was then known as Edward Austen Knight and it remained as a private house into the late 20th century and in the 1990s it was bought by a charitable trust, restored and reopened as a research centre in 2003, I think. And it's got a library of 9,000 books and it's now known as the Centre for the Study of Early Women's Writing, 1600 to 1830. But this is about as near as we're going to be able to get to it because uh, we're not actually going to visit it as such. We'll now come to an important part of the walk if you're going to be following this after seeing the video. We've made our way to the end of the old A32 road that's no longer used. You can probably hear the present busy A32 bypass to my left. Um, there are two paths here. You want to take the one on the left that takes us through some woodland. The one on the right that will actually take you over the bypass. Now there is a handy little map here which shows us uh, where exactly we are. So there we go, that's the, uh, that's the village and we've been walking along here. Um, there's the cricket ground. 
there's Chawton House, the church. So we've made our way along here. We're now going to follow this path through some woods and when we get there, we're then going to follow a path that takes us across a field to Farringdon. Well, just through this wooded path that goes quite close to the A32, got some great views of Chawton Park over on my left and looking back probably even a better view of Chawton House from here and doesn't the, the church tower look splendid with the trees in front of it and just in front there's a little tunnel where the Lavant stream if it was flowing <laughs> would be flowing through a lovely late summer site with the sheep grazing away looks like they've recently been shorn as well This is quite a, an easy walk to follow. Just keep heading south basically. So we've come out of some woods and now crossing a, a field, a path that goes through it. There are some sheep, so I've got Logan on a lead at the moment. We're actually on uh, the Writer's Way, which is a 13 mile long distance path that uh, connects Alton with a number of surrounding villages that have got connections with writers so obviously Chawton, um, Jane Austen and I think it goes to Selborne, Gilbert White. Good morning. Thank you. Lovely day to be out. Yeah, yeah. I love your dog. Oh I love your horses. <laughs> Isn't that a, a beautiful sight? The uh, crop of oats, I think it is, blowing in the slight breeze, catching the sun, looking quite golden. Must be very close to being uh, harvested, I should imagine, now. <laughs> This is a lovely track we're following, nice and shaded, with some superb views either side. Look at that over there. Isn't that quite glorious? And then just let's have a look on this side. A nice cooling breeze as well. What do we got over here? Aha. Now I'm just trying to get my bearings. I'm, I'm going to guess that that must be Selborne Common on the top over there. I'm not 100% sure. And then in the very, very far distance, I wonder if that's Blackdown Hill. It's certainly got the shape of it. I'm not 100% sure. We're now going to head into our second village of the walk, Farringdon. So that's the track that we've just come down and you come to a sort of T junction. Uh, we will be going uh, sort of westwards but we'll have a little explore around the village first. So we'll start off by going eastwards. Well as you can see we're going through a, a farm, lovely old building there and then uh, an old grain store, lovely old uh, straddle stones and then just to my left this building here I believe is the um, the old manor house of the village stuck up on the hill there looking very pretty with a lavender out in the front 
and this is our second church of the walk All Saints Church at Farringdon now part of the nave dates to a 1150 but uh, it's basically 12th century with 13th century and 14th century additions and the building was restored and enlarged in 1858 so it's got a nave with a north aisle and south porch a west tower with a short wooden spire and a chancel with a north vestry I think there are five bells but there are a couple of very interesting things to look at outside the church well quite close to the porch is this uh, terrific cross and apparently I was reading that the Reverend Gilbert White the uh, naturalist from Selborne would preach his sermons from here and he was the curate here before he took up his post of uh, curate at Selborne and then right by it it's quite uh, dark here but this quite magnificent old yew tree and I see there's a, an information board that suggests that it's over 2,000 years old extraordinary and uh, well it's struggling a bit they've got uh, bits of wood holding up the, the branches but oh if that could tell if that could speak that could tell a story or two, couldn't it? I know I always say it, but you just have to just stand and admire something that's lived that long. Well, right next to the church is this quite extraordinary building, and it's called Massey's Folly. It was previously a, a private school, I think it was called Stone House, up until 1844 when a chap called Thomas Massey, who was rector in the village for 62 years, bought it. It had been damaged by fire, and he started to rebuild it, and employing just one bricklayer, one labourer, and one carpenter, he spent the next 30 years constructing this building out of red brick and terracotta tiles. And it took so long because, well, a, he used such little labour, and B, he kept changing his mind and would demolish parts and restart. Indeed, it wasn't actually completed in his lifetime and was boarded up for a while after his death in 1919. No one's sure exactly why he built it, possibly to impress a local widow, or you might have thought that the village would one day develop into a town and this might become the town hall. But uh, I think it's fair to say that Massey was a, a bit of a, an eccentric. Anyway, his executors allowed it to become the village school and village hall. The school was closed in 1987 and the building was sold to developers in 2015 with a view to building two houses in the grounds and converting the main building into flats. It looks like the development's still taking place today by the looks of it. Well, I must say, Fang, you know, charming village with some uh, quite pretty cottages and houses quite a joy to wander through so just before we leave the village just passing what looks like a little village garden it's so so pretty Isn't that wonderful full of wild flowers and uh, poppies there and then over there I can see some sunflowers and cosmos I think. Anyway we're going to now start heading uh, westwards out of the village over the A32 again and start our homeward journey. We've now crossed the A32 and for the rest of the walk on our homeward journey we'll basically be following a, an old disused railway track. It's the old Mion Valley line that uh, used to run for about 22 miles from Alton in the north to Fareham in the south. At Alton it you would link up with at least three other lines I believe. 
It was opened in the early 1900s. It closed to passenger traffic in the 1950s and closed completely right at the end of the 1960s. Now folks, you'll all remember the Cadbury's milk tray adverts and in particular milk tray man. Well, the first of those adverts uh, was filmed in 1968 and I have found some old grainy footage on it on the internet. Now in that advert the milk tray man leapt from a bridge onto a speeding train below and then he clambered dangerously along its roof one carriage to another ducking under bridges from time to time and then he eventually found his way into the ladies sleeping compartment where taking advantage of her absence he left a box of milk tray along with a calling card he then next jumps onto the side of the track before disappearing into the night all because the lady loves milk tray so why have I mentioned that? Well, that actual filming took place just in front of me at this bridge here. And there's the bridge. As you can see, it's all filled in now. And so the advert was filmed in 1968. So the track was just about still here before it was pulled up. And I believe they used a couple of carriages and one locomotive. Now, Sadly, I don't have a box of Cadbury's milk tray. Otherwise, of course, I would have reenacted the scene for you some 53 years later. Um, I've got some Cadbury milk buttons, but not quite the same. <laughs> it really has been one weird day weather-wise. It is glorious now, just as we're coming to, to the end of the walk. So just to uh, get our bearings, um, just uh, over my shoulder here, hopefully the sun's not in the lens. Uh, that's where we've come from, the, the railway track. And then just behind me here, you can see some wonderful scenery. Uh, I reckon that um, this was a crop of oats and it's only recently been harvested in the last day or two because I can still smell that really, um, almost sweet smell of, uh, of a cut crop, as it were. And this is the um, still the old railway track, although it's hard to, to believe. Um, and we're going to be heading uh, just to the side of those trees there, and the footpath will then take us back to uh, the village of Chawton and the end of the walk. <laughs> Well folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do uh, leave a comment as well. And as I always say, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe and that way hopefully you'll be able to join us for another walk sometime in the future. And do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. But another super walk today. It's been a bit cloudy on occasion, so I'm keeping my fingers crossed that the pictures aren't too dark for you. We're uh, heading back to, uh, well, it's either going to be the pub or the tea room. We haven't quite decided. But in the meantime, looks like I've got a packet of chocolate buttons to uh, consume. And sadly, dogs can't have chocolate, so it's all mine. <laughs> so until we meet again, Thanks for watching and cheerio.